but there is no connection between the two uh, series. Yeah. So not even the act. So that's going to be a completely different actor. Oh, we got a little write up here as well. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Also known as the introspective surgeon, Dr. Charles McNider, Dr. Midnight is a brilliant and forward-thinking medical pioneer and a founding member of the JSA. With his trusty oil, he acts as the team's resident doctor and detective. He's got an oil. He got a letter from Hogwarts. Well, uh, yeah, um, nice. That's good, isn't it? He's got an oil. Little oil, man. Uh, great. I, I don't want to say about that. Is it Dr. Isle? I don't know, I don't. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina has gotten 16 more episodes from Netflix. Great. I haven't seen it yet. Apparently, no. is it... Oh, God, no. I, I, no. Apparently, it's actually darker. Yeah, it is, but it... Have you watched it, or have you seen any... It just does not appeal to me at all. Ooh. I, mean, I remember watching the one that was on the 90s, and it was this... Oh, yeah, yeah. It was this, like, really cheesy, like, actually, sitcom sort I of thing. watched that just to get to watch Keenan and Kel. Yeah. Can. They were, that was on before so you, you go through it just to get to it see I watched Sabrina because it was played on Saturday mornings on SMTV Live yes I and remember. one of the things I loved about SMTV Live and, and modern day kids don't have this anymore they don't have Saturday morning cartoons anymore yeah because sad though. there's an entire channel there's several entire channels dedicated to Saturday morning cartoons uh, like that cartoon. run 24 7. Yeah, cartoon and, and stuff like The entire like that. point of it is, has just been made null and void. But what I loved about SMTV Live, I'm so glad I grew up when I did. Hmm. Because they not only did they have all these shows kind of grouped together, so you had like Pokemon, Sabrina, oh, God, yes. uh, and all these various different shows all kind of mashed together. You had like little sketches that Aunt Deck and Cat would do in between and stuff. And a great sketch that they always did was that Deck was wildly in love with Sabrina. Oh yeah, yeah. So he had like this big poetry book and all, and like he would read out different things. And yeah. stuff. It was really creative and it was really fun. And they would use that as little bumpers to introduce Sabrina, play the first half, then do the advert break, and then come back again, and and so on and forth. And like I remember they got one of the ants. I think they got um, Hilda. Was it? They did. Yeah. The one that was like fun. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. One. Like they got her on at one point, and like they were talking about the difference between American pants and British pants. Yeah, and like, 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 I think it, and at one point went well. No, see, like we call these pants, and he went to like pull his like boxers out from his jeans, and she went like, "Okay, sweetie, like I like you, but I don't like you that much, right?" <laughs> I like she just she took him to school, like it was fun. And this was like airing live on a kids I, TV I, show. I, I love their their version of Pokemon. Well, they were dressed oh, up as Pokemon. Yes, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, we have to go on a we have to go on an adventure and catch this Pokemon. <laughs> Throw on teddy bears and stuff, and you're like, what? My favorite one is because Dak always played Misty. Yeah, and, and instead of going like, my name is Misty, I was like, Misty. <laughs> yeah. And like the whole thing was like, the, like Misty and Gary got into a fight with each other, and it's an iconic piece of television where the two of them are fighting each other, and Gary's like. Ah, oh, oh, I'm gonna have to get it back. Ah, oh, I'll, 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 I'll give her a kick or something. I kicks her, and like Dad goes, ah, 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 I'll never have kids now. Ah. <laughs> and you can tell that was something that they just ad lived on the day because yeah. like, you know, like ants just dying, like trying to oh, hold God, back. I, I, I miss this so much. And the best thing was to like his final move on Misty. He went, hi. I am going to use the ultimate Pokemon. I'm going to use Brian. And they're like, huh, Brian, Brian, <laughs> what's Brian? And then like the entire day of Westlife with Brian singing. Come oh out. my God, I remember. And, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Dak loses his mind and goes, Brian, Brian. <laughs> and like, he pulls open the t-shirt. He's got a picture of Brian's face <laughs> on a t-shirt underneath. Oh God, I miss that. I'm actually, yeah, in all fairness, like, this generation doesn't even have any of that. It's just like episode over on the next episode. Maybe an advert no, for no. toys. But see, but the best thing it. is because kids all have like ADD now or whatever. So like they're, 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 they're sort of like they're, their attention is split between worrying about a future that they're not going to have. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> watching animated TV shows on the TV, uh-huh. swiping bits of plastic, otherwise known as mobile phones, and playing Video games on their Fortnite. iPad. Crazy yeah, playing Fortnite, Fortnite on their iPad or whatever it is. I know I don't follow trends anymore because I'm all bitter, miserable, and broken. Merry Christmas, everyone! Uh, <laughs> do you know what? I think we'll play a tune. I think we'll, we should. We'll, we'll play a record and then we'll come back and we'll wrap up. Yes. Sound good? Sound good. Sound good. So we like to play songs on this show that are a little bit weird, a little bit different, a little bit 
of the night, as what, it were. It, you made a song? Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? It's called All My Dreams Are Nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> It's an unbeat. It's an upbeat sort of country it's a master upbeat. kind of track. <laughs> <laughs> All my dreams are nightmares, but it's okay. They only last for eight hours. <laughs> that's that's the full title. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <coughs> I can't breathe. The first line goes a little something like this: I fall asleep to the sound of my own screams, but I'm covered by the thought that I'll wake up to the sound of my own screams. <laughs> All oh my, my dreams God. are nightmares. <laughs> There's a witch demon in a fridge. You know, something like that. Right, anyway. <laughs> Back to reality. Kia ora. I'm Tim Wooder Morrison. I play Django Fett. And I'm following the nerd. What's up, guys? I'm Daniel Logan. Make sure you stay tuned. If you don't, just remember, my bounty always can be on you. I'll see you in the dark side, guys. Enjoy the galaxy and stay following the nerd. Elton John, Step Into Christmas. What a tune. I have sort of started to have a newfound appreciation for Elton John Hmm. in my later years. Because whenever I was growing up, my mom was just playing nothing but 70s tracks. Yeah. I grew up on 70s tunes because whenever, like, my mom would have been sort of in her teenage years in the 70s. So she would have, like, nothing but cassettes and records and everything that she bought whenever she was a kid. Yeah. Uh, like, honestly, our roof space is just bunged with them. Like, we have these big cases filled with old cassette tapes and everything. Oh, my God. So whenever I was growing up, like, I have fond memories of sitting in the high chair as my mom sitting doing the cleaning or making dinner or whatever, just blasting out all these tunes. So one of them was Elton John. And I never really sort of appreciated his music. Same with the Bee Gees and everything like that. Mm. Until I sort of reached my sort of teens, early 20s. And Elton John was one of them. Like uh, Rocket Man oh, was one of my yes. all-time favorite tracks. Uh, and it's one that I was actually listening to there recently. And had this been a normal show, I would have played it. But it's so good. It's so beautiful in, in, in its simplicity. But it's great. Like Elton John, such an, a, a, a remarkable singer, an incredibly talented also, musician. Uh, I can't stand. Oh, I'm on. still standing. I'm still yeah, standing. Yeah, yeah, it's a great little rock and tune. And also the one for you done in Lion King. Um, oh, I can't remember. Oh, in the air tonight. Was yes, it? something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget the actual name of it because I'm just tired and. Circle of life. Circle of life. Yes, because uh, no, in the air tonight was Phil Collins, who I'm confusing because he did the song <laughs> for Tarzan. Yeah. Anyway, I've, I've talked about Disney enough tonight. I'm done. I'm over it. Done. I'm no over more. Disney. Um, yeah, but with Elton John, Rocket Man. Have you seen the Shatner version? What of Rocket Man? Does it what? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> right. So it's it's at some award show thing. I forget what it was. The Shatner was hosting. Okay. And they were talking about Elton John. They were talking about Rocket Man and everything. And they said, "Now time for a special performance." Of William Shatner's interpretation of oh Rocket Man. Oh my god, what? How pretentious can you get <laughs> an interpretation of Rocket Man? It's him on stage. It's, it's very famous. You haven't seen this? Oh. Right. So it's him on stage uh-huh. with a cigarette in his hand. <laughs> and he's sitting on stage. And, he, and like the music starts and he goes, She packed my bags last night. Pre flight. Zero hour. 9 a.m. <laughs> and I'm gonna be high as a kite by then. <laughs> <sighs> and he just, he talks, sings. Oh my it's god. It's the most cringiest, weirdest thing ever. I've never seen this. I need to play that for you after this show is over, um, yeah. which is looking to be fairly soon, judging by the clock. The big hand's coming up to a quarter past, and the little hand's on 11. It's a quarter past 11 here. You're listening to 102.4 Bounce FM, and this is Following the Nerd, the Christmas special of happiness and wonder, presented by two broken people. <laughs> I am Saxon. He does this all the time. <laughs> Too penny. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Uh, and we're just wrapping things up here. Now, you're also a person, Anthony, that has seen Aquaman. I have. Which is DC's latest effort that they're lumping into the barn with. Now, how is it? Is it good? Is it right? Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's not terrible. No, no terrible. Right, why? All good. Because 
the thing that I liked about it, what I actually thought with, with this movie was this was before Justice League. Is it? It's it, not. It's, it's after. It's set after Justice League. But it has flashbacks telling you his origin story and stuff. Like um, at the start, it talks about like how he uh, became Aquaman. Well, basically, was born and stuff. So the Queen of Atlantis. Uh, somehow, so that's Nicole Kidman's yes. character. Uh, somehow, like crashed onto the lighthouse in a bad, really bad storm, and she's now nursed back to health. And like a couple of years pass. And they've conceived a child, but uh, the king has found out. I uh, want uh, wants her back. Since he's like weird. Now the thing about it is, I I kind of was confused about, it, and I think they're actually people, but I thought they were big like like robots because they look like the, the the well the armor looks like uh, do you know total uh, total recall. Yes. Uh, do you know the the the, the reboot ver- version. Do you know them weird robot looking oh, yes, things? Yes, yes, yes. It looked like them, and. Uh, she fights him off, but she basically turns around and says that she has to go back to see her. That basically, she's just doing it to protect uh, the her. Okay, hus- so her are husband. you just going to go through the entire plot here? No, just that bit. Right, 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 right. So you've got that, and then it goes all the way back. It goes to where we are now, just after Justice League. Um, there's crisis at the moment at, at Atlantis. There is basically a war that is starting to happen at the. Uh, basically the king ish is wanting to fight with the humans mm-hmm. uh, and the only way that they can stop this is the two of them actually have like a fight to see who becomes the king of Atlantis um, but they're so they're so good it's it's really really like the, the action sequences are really good in it um, I've heard good things about the really, action really sequences good. The what effects. really shocked me for this is because we were talking about Star Wars was uh Django uh, Tamara Morrison yeah. is the father of this That's, that shocked me I was like oh my god it's really really cool like I haven't, we haven't I haven't seen him in, in anything since well Star Wars <laughs> but uh, I was really really happy with that and it's really really good acting in it um, and then what really shocked me was the guy who played the original uh, Green Goblin I can't remember his name oh Willem Dafoe he's brilliant in this he's fantastic so he's basically the teacher he teaches Aquaman how to use his powers and uh, that, but that's in flashbacks. Uh-huh. Um, but he's uh, he's also there as well. Uh, Mira, uh, King Mira, uh, prin- Princess. Oh yes, yes, yes. I love the fact, and this is something that I had a conversation with Amber uh, Heard. Yes, yeah. I had a conversation with my fiance's friend Joy, who's really, really that's her favorite thing, is Aquaman. And she explained to me that um, Princess Mira has these like uh, powers that she can actually take like like moisture from the from the gr- the earth and use it as weapons oh, like water. Cool. They actually do this in this movie. There are so many good like sequences with it. So it's really true to the comic book. It's world, super it? yeah. true. Like there's one action sequence in this that I was like, this is really really cool. And I mean, she is like proper powerful. Like 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 there's certain action sequences in this where you're like you don't want to mess with her. She looks, you know, like oh, that's just not because she well, she's kind of got the little mermaid thing going on, doesn't she? She's got like the red hair. And Imagine stuff. that, but Jacqueline Hyde. <laughs> oh, it's it's. So she's got like a light side and a dark side. Too. Yeah, yeah. Like nice. uh, there's some, and it's so so good. Um, I did like the the mentioned uh, when she first appears to try and recruit Aquaman to come back. <laughs> Um, she mentions St- Staffan what? Steppenwolf. Yeah, yeah, like you defeated him. You are you are really powerful. You ha- you have to take the the crown. But the problem is with this is that he's well, they all look down on him because he's half breed, so they don't really see him as this thing. Um, ah, right. So there's a whole whole thing with that, but it's it's so good. And I have seen people online going, "Ah, oh, it's just not good," or "It's it's terrible," and all this stuff. I'm like. Me, I I think for me, I kind I'm the type of person who doesn't go listen go by the crowd. I kind of go and go. I can't hate something if I've never watched it before. Yeah. I'll go watch it and then I'll make my opinion on it. Well, there are a lot of people out there saying this is it's it's, it's all right. It's yeah, what a lot of people are saying like it's it's not great. It's not like a like a world ending movie like oh uh, God, like Avengers not... would be. No, uh, no. Like it's it's very sort of. All right, I enjoyed it. I okay. I have to say I really enjoyed. It. I came in into this going, ah, oh, they're gonna mess this up. What shocked me the most was uh, Mark, huh. who is uh, owner operator MD of Following the Nerd. Um, 
he is the world's biggest DC.